Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, I wanna talk about one hand manipulations on the handgun. This is a topic I've covered uh, on some other videos, uh, but I wanted to talk specifically about it now and give a video just isolating that specific skill set because I've noticed um, somewhat of a troubling trend. Uh, and I see this mostly in force on force classes uh, in regards to weapon recovery, which I'll get to. But really the problem comes down to people not being able to work through the problem or not being able to efficiently work through the problem of rendering a firearm safe uh, with their support hand. And you might ask, well, why would I need to do that? Uh, the class that I see it the most in is my citizen response to active shooter. There's a live gun, a uh, bad guy's gun, and you've got to recover it and make it safe. Now, of course, there's always going to be that argument from the peanut gallery, oh, you shouldn't touch it, you're going to get your fingerprints on it. And those people don't understand how investigations work in the moment, especially if I'm not a medical professional and I can't really diagnose the condition of my bad guy, I just know he's stopped being a bad guy for that moment, I might want to remove the firearm from his uh, ready access and render it safe because it's in an environment of unknown individuals, which is its own separate class, own separate theory, application, concepts, principles, and techniques. But the actual manipulation of the firearm itself, not only does these skill sets allow you to manipulate a gun one-handed with your support hand only, uh, if you're worried about your primary hand becoming injured, you can then use these te same techniques on your support hand for, for reloading and working malfunctions. But also in the fact that if I've got to keep someone at gunpoint, or if I have to keep my own gun in my hand, and I've got to secure, or secure another weapon, and I don't know the condition or the safety of that weapon, if any of the safety features have been removed, or if it's just unsafe in any other way, I want to be able to safely uh, render that weapon empty. I want to be able to unload it without taking any undue attention off the environment that I'm in and the things I need to worry about. Uh, because people probably don't spend as much time shooting with their support hand only as maybe they should, uh, I've seen people come up with some very inventive and admittedly some very unrealistic or very inefficient ways to perform the task of unloading that gun. Of course, the biggest problem most shooters are going to have is they're going to be right-handed, which means if they're using their, their primary hand uh, to keep someone at gunpoint or to keep their firearm in roll or in play or, or usable, they're probably going to be recovering and, and rendering safe with their support hand, which is going to be their left hand. If you're not left-handed, you may be a little confused by how to operate a handgun controls with your left hand, especially under a degree of stress or duress. Uh, for my example gun, I've chosen Gen 3 Glock 19. Specifically, pick this one, grab this one of the safe, because it has the, the True Glow TFO sights on it, which are very rounded. And these sights are often derided by some people because it makes it hard to manipulate the gun using those sights. Uh, to rack it and clear it and things like that because the sights are very rounded. And then another aspect of this video, even though these aren't my favorite sights, I do like them, uh, to show you that that's more of a training issue and a concept issue than it is an actual real life thing. Now this gun is pretty much stock. The only thing, obviously, there's an undercut and of course the TFOs are aftermarket sights. But everything else about this gun is OEM as you'd get it from Glock as a Gen 319. Picking the gun up with your left hand is going to be a little bit confusing because the magazine release isn't where it necessarily might be, unless the handgun, of course, has a magazine release on both sides. Uh, you don't really need to worry about the slide release lever, but what you do need to do is render the weapon as safe as possible. You're probably going to be having your other gun out there, maybe high compression or something like that. Uh, so you need to hit the magazine release. That's the first step. So now that the magazine's out of the gun, I need to rack it clear. Now this is the part where most people, I won't say most, I'm going to say some, closer to most, start to get sucked into the task and they get very task focused and they forget about the world around them because they assume that they have to rack the rear sights off of a very hard object and they have to guide it visually. So they're going to pull up and be like, oh, okay, there's my belt. Oh, I got it. And that's just not the case. If you apply significant enough inward pressure against any hard surface, the gun is going to rack and I don't really have to take my eyes off of what I'm doing in order for it to happen. So. While it, it might be advisable to guide, take a quick glance down, like, okay, I'll use my belt right there, and then you can rack it. It's not an issue so severe that it's required you to take your eyes completely off the room. Worst case scenario, you're down here doing this. Okay, and then you look up, and you're like, where'd he go? Oh, well, hell, now I gotta go find that guy. So it's an issue. This isn't a topic just for the citizen. This is also something for law enforcement who arguably are more likely going to have to perform weapon recoveries. Because it's not like in your law enforcement career you don't ever encounter loaded guns that you need to unload and make safe, right? This is a practice issue. Uh, the cool thing is if you own a gun you can practice it as much as you want. Not only does this help you in practicing that weapon recovery technique, 
And there's more to it than just the manipulation of the gun, but that's all we're talking about for right now is manipulating the firearm itself. But it not only helps you practice that, but it also helps you practice your support hand only techniques. Let's say your primary hand is injured and you're using your support hand. If you have to manipulate the slide, if you have to hit the magazine release, if you have to do any of those things, how are you gonna be able to accomplish it in the most effective way? Uh, so my personal feeling is if, uh, if I'm having to reload my, my, uh, my handgun uh, with my, my primary, or I should say my support hand only, just in this example using my left hand, because this is the problem that most people are going to have, uh, I'm going to get the magazine in it and I'm going to use my index finger to just close the slide release. I'm not going to worry about racking it off of stuff. Clearing malfunctions may be a little bit different, but the fact remains that it doesn't have to be this huge production of, okay, well, I got to guide this and I got to use a hard object and I got to take my eyes completely off the world around me. You don't. All you need to do is press in and press down on a semi-rigid to rigid surface as hard as you possibly can within reason. Uh, it's not like throwing a jab, but it's close. And that is going to manipulate the slide of the gun. Do it two or three times, especially if your eyes aren't on it, to make sure that it's actually clear. At that point, you can even, with the inside of your uh, index finger, you can hold up on even on an OEM slide release, and as you press down, lock the gun to the rear. Now I'm gonna go ahead and load my demo gun up with some dummy rounds and give you kind of a functional demonstration of how something like this might work. Uh, because most people watching this are going to be right-handed, uh, I'll switch my handgun over to my right hand. I'm primarily a left-handed handgun shooter, but that's kind of irrelevant for this purposes. I'll be able to shoot one-handed if I have to while I'm recovering that firearm. If I choose or need to recover that firearm, find it with my foot, a little proprioception, spatial awareness, now I've got the gun. I can drop the magazine, rack it clear, make it safe, chamber check. Now the gun's been rendered safe, I can stick it in the back pocket, hand off to a trusted individual, do whatever I need to do to make sure the firearm isn't introduced and uncontrolled in a pretty chaotic environment. As a final note, I want to kind of head off some of the nonsense on this. If you roll your eyes at a concept like this, and, and there's many other concepts but that, that are kind of in the same category, uh, but this one specifically is, oh, you know, that's tactical Timmy nonsense. You have to ask yourself if you're taking self-defense seriously, and you probably are to a certain degree, uh, but have you considered the after the shooting aspect, what the plan is, what type of situations you might find yourself in, what you might have to do. Uh, I see people who are more, much more willing, in some cases, to practice their support hand only shooting because they might have been wounded in their primary hand than they are willing to practice and think about the actual practical nature and, and the implications of having to do a weapon recovery while keeping a bad guy at gunpoint. And it's not necessarily an active shooter situation. Go back to law enforcement. Uh, I've seen some cops recover some, some live firearms in, in some very lackadaisical, unsafe, and um, ways that displayed poor training or poor attention to training they'd previously had, which are pretty much functionally the same thing in the moment. So ask yourself, does it have, is it applicable to your life? And the answer is maybe, uh, because we can't predict the future. And does it take long, or does it require you a great investment of time or resources to become proficient with something like this? And the answer is most likely no. Uh, you can do this with 100% dry fire, no problem. One gun, another gun. Cert pistol, another gun. Finger gun, if you only have one handgun, use your gun for weapon recovery. Practice on the most difficult gun you have. Practice on a revolver. Practice on uh, any kind of handgun you can get access to in the safest manner possible. I like to use dummy rounds because they show positive ejection. Uh, if I just use a gun with, that doesn't have a magazine in it, or if I just use a gun that has a magazine in it, that's probably a better option because at least then it'll lock back on the empty mag showing that you actually got the chamber open completely. Uh, but dummy rounds to me make a lot more sense because they show that positive ejection of the round or any other problems you can create and it allows you to press check to make sure it's clear, things of that nature. Now this is just the handgun. I'm going to do another video, uh, probably next, where I talk about what's even more complicated and that's recovering rifles. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.